Kel Kellogg here at Kel Kellogg Outdoors, and this is podcast number two. I'm coming to you from the wheelhouse of the charter boat Happy Hooker um, from Berkeley, California. We're about to cross under the Golden Gate Bridge, and we've got a really unique opportunity here. As being a full-time fishing writer, I get a lot of questions from people about becoming a charter boat skipper, and I'm with one of the most experienced charter boat skippers in Northern California. I'm gonna be turning the camera in a second to Captain Chris Smith. He has a great legacy. Um, he purchased a boat from his father, the legendary Jim Smith. His sons are captains, and he's gonna give us some real in-depth insight on what it's all about being a charter boat skipper, um, about hitting these great Northern California fisheries. He's done it all, he knows it all. And uh, without further ado, here's Captain Chris Smith. I'm gonna whip the camera around here and say hi. What's going on, Captain Chris? Uh, not too much, just steaming out this morning. This is about the only break I get in the day, especially this time of year. We're working like by 14, 15 hour days by the time it's all said and done. So this is like my, my peaceful time. So uh, I'm going to pan around the cabin here. He's got all his electronics going. Here comes the bridge. What are we doing today, Chris? What's the plan for the day? How many people do we have? What's the deal? Well, today we have a full load. We have 36 anglers on board, and we're going to take a look at some gear on the way out. We're going to turn it, rebate it, and then we're going to continue to the islands. And then on the way back, after we fish for rockfish and lake cod, we're going to pull the rest of the pots that we need to fill out our limits on the craft. So let me give the folks some insight, and it's kind of hillbilly. I'm talking over the camera. I'm not going to keep turning on myself. I'm going to keep filming Chris and the scenery here. Some of the things I know about these kind of these kind of fisheries and this kind of fishing Chris has got 36 people's lives in his hands driving the boat He's also got to put them on fish and he's got a cold this morning. And he's been doing this for months He's responsible for the bait the fuel the boat the maintenance the whole thing Tell us the realities of being a charter boat skipper. Is it, is it all glamour and glitz all fun all the time? Well, you know, one of the reasons why I got in this business is because of my father. You know, I'm, it's a legacy. Um, my son Jonathan also works with me, of course. But it's not all glamorous. No. I mean, you go home, you smell like fish, if you're lucky. Um, there's a lot of ins and outs in this business. We get very little free time ourselves to actually go out and turn a handle on a lot. And uh, I personally love the fish, but I don't do a lot of it myself. I have to do it on a day off. But it's uh, thrilling just seeing other people catch fish and making their day or making a difference on a day that does it for me. And that's why I'm gonna wake up at 345, 4 o'clock in the morning, come down here, even with the horrible colds, and do what I do. So, peak of the season, it's July, you've you've run the boat for you know 24 days in a row. Take me through your day. What's a day in Chris Smith's life like? When does it start? When does it end? And what do you have to do? What are your responsibilities? Well, the day starts, like I said, at 4.30. We get up and uh, make coffee and uh, kind of shake the cobwebs off. I mean, everybody needs to do that. July, August, we're absolutely beat at that point because, hey, guess what? We just worked about maybe some uh, days straight at that point. Uh, with very few days off. And uh, you come down and you check fluids. Uh, if you didn't do it the night before, um, there's so many little quirks to the boat and keeping these things afloat and making sure that your passengers are safe, um, that also eats up a good portion of your day. Um, the meet and greet, checking all of your systems, uh, making sure that your bilge system works properly, your alarms, um, and um, all that stuff it does take a lot of time. And aside from that, um, you know, once everybody's checked in, we head out on the grounds. Um, just uh, depending on what type of fishery we're fishing, and that could change quite a bit. We um, fish for the better portion of the day, come back, and, and 
uh, clean fish. And, uh, we uh, say goodbye to our folks and, and start getting ready for the whole next day. I fish with you a lot, and I fish with both of your brothers a lot. Captain Steve up in Alaska, Captain James on the Keldon. You guys know the fisheries really well. Do you feel pressure? Is there pressure to perform on these fish, or do you have it so dialed in you can whack them, you know what's going on every day? <laughs> you know what, Cal, that's, that's actually a good question. Uh, you know, there are days when you're on top, day after day after day, and you feel like you can whack them. But, you know what, when you're fishing a huge minus tide and it just blew overnight, and guess what, I don't care who you are, you're not going to do very well on the grounds. I mean, fish are, are so susceptible to tide, current, and weather patterns, and seasonal changes, that nobody can stay on them day after day. The cool thing about where we're at is we have such a versatile fishery. Um, you know, if it's not um, halibut in the springtime, guess what? Tides ramp up, we start getting these big minus tides. Hi. Bass will be on the rocks or it'll be someplace else. So there's always something. And this year we had such a good, uh, solid amount of halibut that you could be successful on those big tides. Let's look at the scenery from your office here. We're about to go under the bridge. It's phenomenal. Great clear day. Could, cra could, could Captain Chris do anything else? Would you do any other job? You love this. I do. I absolutely do. Um, I don't think I was built for anything else to be honest with you. I love doing this. I mean, can you really have a better office? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, you, your son, your son, uh, Captain Jonathan, and he saw the camera and he ran away like a little girl. It was kind of <laughs> funny. He stuck his head in for a second. He's like, I'm out of here. I mean, you've trained, you've trained him. He's a young man. I've been fishing with him since he was 14 or 15 years old. What? Tell me about that. What's that feel like? I mean, that's your legacy. You're your dad's legacy. He's your legacy in a lot of ways. Oh, it's amazing. You know, uh, he does have um, some big shoes to fill. You know, um, you know, between his grandfather, his uncle, and myself, but. Jonathan is a very capable person, and you know, um, he's a great student, but not only that, he also has a natural instinct of where to go, and he's proven himself time after time this last spring, and this last spring he spent more time on this boat than I did. Um, kind of funny because some of the customers got so used to seeing him on board. You look so proud of him right now. Look at you. I am. I'm very proud. Jonathan's done amazing so far. This is you know what? He's going to be one of the greats. I, sure. I, I, I agree. He is, he is solid. I'm going to get him on camera one of these days. Maybe next season. Maybe this season. I don't know. I'm going to get him. I'm going to pin him down and we're going to interview him. We're about to go around the point here. Rory's going to get some tight action. Let's, let's wrap this up. What's going to happen next season? We're wrapping down this year. Next year, you're going to be coming out swinging here, April, May. What's the season hold? What's it looking like based on your experience? Well, based on what we seen this year, we were having some 100, 150, 200 fish days this year in the springtime. Um, and we were actually running from the Shaker Halibut. The juvenile halibut population was at its all-time high, and it was the largest in recorded history for San Francisco Bay. Now, this is an overall um, picture, including uh, keeper fish, or fish above 22 inches. And it's about the only sustainable fishery that our Bay Area has. Um, seeing that, you know, halibut will actually spawn two or three times, or maybe more, before they're actually legal size. So, I expect this year, um, very 
very large halibut count. It's better than our previous or better than this year. Um, like back in, I believe it was the early 90s, we were getting these huge halibut schools. We had a huge halibut population. And some of the boats were going down the South Bay and getting in excess of 100 keeper halibut, um, you know, a handful of days out of the season. I would not be surprised if we saw something like that, halibut count, 60, 70s, stuff like that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. I'll let you get back to driving the boat here. I'm going to swing the camera back around. Um, so, so there you have it. You, you just heard it from a guy, a deckhand, a skipper, a very successful business owner, a dad. He's, uh, as I said, he's done it all, he's seen it all in terms of charter boat skippering, you know, here in California, up in Alaska, back to California again. Um, I really thank you for sharing your time with us, Chris. And uh, let's wrap up. That's podcast number two, and we'll be coming to you again real soon here in Northern California. This is uh, Kel Kellogg from Kellogg Outdoors, signing off.